Hello there, and welcome to the first part of a three-part series looking at the history of Toronto's old trolleybus network. This video will look at the history of Toronto's trolleybus network as a whole, while the following videos will look at the individual routes more closely. So, let's get into the video. While I am certain the majority of you who stumble across this video know what a trolley bus is, if you need a refresher, a trolley bus is what happens when you take a bus and a streetcar and slam them together. It's an electric powered bus with two trolley poles. Power comes in through one pole and goes out the other. I'm not going to get into the debate on the merits of trolley buses compared to its counterparts as there are videos on YouTube that you can find that already discuss this. For this video, I will focus on Toronto's long gone trolley bus network, the origins of which can be found in the 1920s. Toronto's first trolley bus route would begin operations on June 19, 1922, along Mount Pleasant Road using four buses that could seat 30 people. These buses would be built by Canadian Brill in partnership with Packard, who supplied the chassis, and Westinghouse, who supplied the twin motors. This route, which was given the number 2, would operate from the intersection of Young and Merton Streets, east to Mount Pleasant Road and then north to Eglinton Avenue. The buses would Y at both ends of the route and would be stored overnight in a bus shed south of Merton Street. In 1923, wires would be strung up along Eglinton Avenue, allowing the buses to be stored at Eglinton Carhouse. As well, an on-street loop would be established at the south end of the route with buses now looping via Young Street, Balliol Street, and Al Green Lane. This route would prove successful. So successful, in fact, that it would be replaced by an extension of the St. Clair Streetcar on November 3rd, 1925. But don't worry though, the Mount Pleasant trolley bus and trolley buses in general would return to Toronto streets after World War II. After World War II, Toronto streetcar network was in need of repairs, and this alongside the TTC being low on cash meant that the TTC would need to look long and hard at its streetcar network and decide how it wished to proceed with the limited resources it had. As well, the post-war world was one of rapid suburbanization, and with it the rapid growth of car ownership and car-centric infrastructure which favored buses over streetcars. All of these factors meant that trolley buses began to grow in popularity not just in Toronto but also the rest of North America. A trolley bus offered all the maneuverability of a bus with the electric power of a streetcar. Cities across North America at the time began phasing out their streetcar networks in favor of buses and trolley buses, and Toronto would be no different in this regard. Cities like Montreal, Edmonton and Winnipeg had already begun to develop their own trolley bus networks and Calgary and Kitchener were on their way as well. The TTC would take delivery of a demonstrator unit built by the Canadian Car and Foundry in 1946. This bus would be delivered to Lansdowne Car House where it would be tested and then sent back only to be recalled in 1947 when the TTC launched its first trolley bus route in 22 years. That said, it wasn't as if the TTC was going to dismantle the entire streetcar network, as not only was it large, but many routes simply could not be converted to a trolley bus due to high ridership. Instead, the TTC would focus its conversion efforts on the lighter used routes. Service on Toronto's new trolley bus routes would be provided by 85 new T44 models built by the Canadian Car and Foundry. Each bus could seat 44 passengers. In 1953, the TTC would purchase an additional 40 buses from the CC and F. These would be the T48A model, which could seat 48 passengers and would be the last new trolley buses the TTC ever purchased. Instead, going forward, the TTC would purchase second-hand buses from other cities as the popularity of trolley buses had begun to fade in the 1950s. The TTC would purchase 15 Marmon Harrington TC48 buses from Cincinnati in 1953. This would soon after be followed by a purchase of 5 CC and F T48As from the abandoned Ottawa trolley bus network in 1959. This would be followed by a purchase of 44 Marmon Harrington TC44s from Cleveland in 1963. 
The final vehicle purchase would be in the 70s after the TTC purchased 23 CC and F T44 and T48As from the abandoned trolley bus networks in Cornwall and Halifax. These would be used for parts and never saw revenue service. An important thing that needs to be addressed is Toronto didn't really have one trolley bus network, but two. What I mean by this is the trolley bus network was split up between the Eglinton Division and the Lansdowne Division. These two networks were not connected to each other, leaving them as trolley bus islands. If a bus needed to be moved from one garage to the other, it would have to be towed. The TDC did consider converting the 32 Eglinton West into a trolley bus route to bridge this gap and unify the two networks, but this wouldn't occur. So for its entire existence, Toronto's trolley bus network operated as two separate islands of trolley buses. As for the division names, Eglinton Division denotes routes that operated out of Eglinton Garage, and Lansdowne Division denotes routes that operated out of Lansdowne Garage and the nearby Wade Yard, which was a satellite garage around the corner from Lansdowne. Into the 1960s, the TTC's fleet of trolley buses had begun to show their age and were in need of a rebuild. The TTC decided to pursue rebuilding their aging fleet of buses instead of purchasing new ones which were hard to come by at the time. The TTC would send a bus to New Flyer in Winnipeg, as well as a bus to Robin Nodwell in England for a test rebuild. New Flyer would ultimately win the contract for a rebuild of the TTC fleet of trolley buses. The rebuild would include new chassis, new bodies based on the 700 series, called the E700s, and remanufactured components. The rebuild program would be completed on April 26, 1972 and this would extend the life of Toronto's trolley bus fleet for another 20 years. The 60s and 70s would also see a further expansion of the trolley bus network with more route conversions being proposed as well. As mentioned earlier, the 32 Eglinton West was a bus considered for conversion as it would link the two separate trolley bus networks together. Trolleybus wires already extended along Eglinton Avenue to Avenue Road for the 61 Nortown Trolleybus, as well as from Ossington Avenue to Gilbert Loop at Caledonia Road for the 63 Ossington Trolleybus. So it would only have been a matter of stringing up new wires between Avenue Road and Ossington Avenue, and then stringing up new ones from Caledonia Road to Jane Street. This would have allowed for a full conversion of the 32 Eglinton West from Eglinton Station to Jane Street. The extension of trolley bus service to Jane Street may have been an easy task, but bridging the gap between Avenue Road and Ossington Avenue wasn't. Local residents from the village of Forest Hill, for which Eglinton Avenue cuts through, opposed the extension of trolley bus service through their village, likely citing the unsightliness of the wires as the reason. Whatever the reason actually was, the proposal to convert the 32 Eglinton West and unify Toronto's trolley bus network was dead by 1964, and eventually trolley bus service west of Ossington Avenue to Caledonia Road was ended as well. Other routes that were discussed for possible conversion included the 94 Wellesley, 75 Sherburne, 6 Bay, and the 78 Runnymede South. As well, there was discussion of extending the 89 Weston trolley bus all the way to Steeles Avenue. Of these plans though, only the conversion of the 6 Bay to a trolley bus would occur, but you can learn more about that in my video on the Lansdowne trolley bus division. By the time the 1990s rolled around, Toronto's trolley bus network was in need of not just repair, but modernization. However, declining ridership as well as declining subsidies from the provincial government meant that the TTC could barely afford to keep the trolley buses they had running, let alone modernize the network with new buses and catenary. Some buses had already been retired, and so the TTC would lease 30 surplus trolley buses from the Edmonton Transit Service in 1990 and then an additional 10 in 1991. This was only meant to be a short-term solution as the TTC was fully committed to keeping its trolley buses and they were just holding out for some kind of investment from the province. As the 90s dragged on though, it became increasingly clear this investment wasn't coming, and the trolley buses had become the most expensive surface network to maintain, beating out the streetcars. 
Seeing that there was no saving the trolleybus network at this point, the TTC would decide to end trolleybus service in Toronto and convert the network to diesel bus operations. The last buses would run on the Eglinton Division on December 28, 1991 with the Lansdowne Division following on January 14, 1992. Or that was the plan at least. You see, those buses leased from Edmonton were still under lease for one more year and the Edmonton Transit Service wasn't going to let the TTC out of its lease. With no other option, the TTC would restore trolleybus service on the four Annette and six Bay routes in September 1992. This reprieve would only last a year though and July 1993 would be the final end for trolleybus service in Toronto. After this though, the overhead catenary would remain just in case they would be needed again or if that long sought after investment into the network materialized. This wouldn't happen though and in 1996 the provincial government would end all public transit subsidies. The TTC would soon after remove the remaining catenary, thus ending the story of Toronto's trolleybus network. Today little remains of Toronto's trolleybus network. You can still see old catenary poles around the city, now having either been repurposed or just rusting away doing nothing. Eglinton Garage, the center of the Eglinton Division, still sort of exists, serving as the Eglinton Station bus terminal. Lansdowne Garage was torn down in 2003 and today is just an empty lot. The nearby Wade Yard still exists but is now just a laneway used for parking. There are of course various bus loops that were once used by trolley bus routes, but they are either still in use by other successor routes or predate the trolley bus routes. However, there is at least two pieces of trolley bus exclusive infrastructure still around. The first being Row Loop on Avenue Road, which was constructed in 1953 for the 63 Nortown route. The loop still remains, although it is no longer used for active service and may rarely see an out-of-service bus on layover. The other being Doncliffe Loop on Mount Pleasant Avenue, which was also constructed in 1953 for the 63 Nortown route. Today, it is still used as the northern terminus for the 103 Mount Pleasant bus. Toronto's old trolleybus network is definitely an interesting piece of the city's transit history. It came about after World War II when the TTC was grappling with what to do with its streetcar network that was in need of repair. The solution it seemed was to focus on the core routes and convert the lesser routes into trolley buses. Over the next 40 years the network would grow to encompass 10 routes with others being proposed. However, just as financial issues, among other things, would see Toronto's streetcar network begin contracting in the 1940s, so too would financial issues be the downfall of Toronto's trolleybus network. It is interesting to contemplate what the network would look like today had the TTC gotten the investment it was hoping for in the 90s. Would it have been expanded? Would the two divisions of the network finally be unified? It's worth remembering the oil crisis of the 1970s is what solidified the trolleybus's place in Toronto, and today in 2023 we are once again seeing a major push to reduce our reliance on gas and oil through the use of electric vehicles. It, alongside the general cheaper cost of electricity in the long term, is what convinced the TTC and other transit agencies to go all in on electric buses. So perhaps had the trolleybuses been able to stick around, their importance would only be greater today, and perhaps we would be talking about expanding the network further alongside the purchase of electric buses. Either way though, today there is little hope of the trolleybuses ever returning, as it seems transit agencies across North America have decided that electric buses that use batteries instead of wires are the future. But who knows, maybe the battery electric thing won't work out in the end and trolley buses will have their time in the sun again. Only time will tell though. And with that, I will end this video here.
Thank you for watching this video and if you enjoyed it and want to see more like it, please hit that subscribe button because there are more videos like it on the channel and there are more videos like it on the way. If there's anything you want to say about Toronto's old trolley bus network, don't be afraid to do so in the comments section down below. And remember, there are two other companion videos to this one that look at the individual routes more closely. So don't forget to check those out too if you're interested. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.